for, uh, for a presentation that is uh, somewhat similar to what uh, the first speaker, Monica, gave. And uh, so I'm going to tell you a bit uh, about what is uh, partly my home, the European Southern Observatory, the, the uh, astronomical facilities that we have in Chile, and uh, what they may mean to you. So this is a view of our uh, flagship, the Paranal Observatory in the, in the desert of Chile. Uh, you have seen pictures of our other sites in the movie that uh, Maria Edwards presented in the, in the previous session. And uh, to talk about uh, how this idea came to be, uh, we are an old organization, not as old as uh, CERN, we, have it, uh, we are 53 years old now, with a double mission of providing the member states of the organization, which is uh, 15 at the moment, uh, hopefully 16 soon when Brazil joins, the facilities that, uh, world-class facilities that are required nowadays or that were required already 50 years ago to do astronomy, for online astronomy, that individual countries in Europe couldn't afford themselves. So in order to be competitive, in particular to, to compete uh, successfully uh, with uh, our North American brothers, uh, we had to pull efforts to do together what we couldn't do separately. The second function is uh, to promote collaborations in astronomy across Europe. And I would say that in the context of uh, the, the festival in which we are now, and we are now uh, a part of this function is to promote collaborations outside astronomy across Europe. So to bring astronomy to those who may feel inspired by it and uh, to those who can make sense of it in a different way in which scientists could, uh, could also do. We are a multi-site organization. Picture in the background is our headquarters in uh, Munich, near Munich. And we have four sites in Chile, including three observatory sites uh, in the middle of nowhere, as you can see in this slide. Uh, the, the image on the left is the observatory of uh, La Silla, where uh, Maria carried out uh, part of her residency. Uh, at, the, at the top right, you have the Paranal Observatory, where the, which is currently recognized, including by our competition, as the most productive uh, observatory, ground-based observatory in optical and infrared astronomy. And our latest addition, which is the ALMA Observatory, as uh, an ensemble of uh, 66 uh, radio antennas working in the microwave regime, which is uh, exploring mostly the very cold universe. So you can see that the common feature to these places is that they are in very remote, very inhospitable places, places where you would like to go just to see what is there, but uh, you would never plan a vacation with the family there. And that remoteness is already a part of uh, what uh, ISO has to offer. What, we are an organization that, in order to do forefront astronomy, it has to carry out uh, research and development in, high, in highly technological areas. Here you have a non-exhaustive list of technologies that are either developed or that ISO helps to develop or in which ISO benefits from developments uh, uh, around the world, uh, including in the industry and in, the, in different research and development environments that cover a very, very wide range of technologies. And uh, talking about uh, a place like Ars Electronica, many of these are familiar to many of you because you may have used them for widely different purposes than from the astronomy. It's also a place where science gets done, not only obtaining nice images like some of these, but also data that are extremely meaningful for scientists to reveal answers to, to questions that we have about uh, all kinds of astronomical objects, everything going from beyond the moon in our backyard, in our solar system, all the way to the most uh, distant regions of the universe and to the regions where uh, structures are just beginning to form in the, in the universe, taking into account that a telescope is like a huge uh, uh, time machine in which the farther we look, the, the, the farther back we see in time. So that's, uh, that's a movie in, in time. But it's also a place for inspiration. So you see here Maria again next to, to our, two of our facilities, the radio telescope here in the foreground and the 3.6-meter telescope in La Silla in the, in the background. So a place where these things come together, the science, the technology, and the meaning that it all has and where we need to go beyond the astronomers, to go to the artists and to go to people from very different walks of life in order to answer to our questions. So in my last slide, I'm going to try to convince you that we're in a privileged situation to trigger this inspiration, uh, that astronomy has uh, a privileged position uh, in order to, to do this. I think it's fair to say that astronomy is intimately connected with impulses that are deeply rooted in, in human nature. 
It's a science of the universe. It's a science of everything, you know, the all of everything. Therefore, this has an inspiration power that no matter how you consider it, no matter how tiny part of the universe or aspect of the universe you are interested in, it touches you. Astronomy will have, in one way or another, more or less directly, something to do with it. It's attractive to many. You can understand astronomy, you can understand many aspects of astronomy without being an astronomer. You don't even need mathematics or physics in order to enjoy the night sky, to feel inspired by it, or to, be, to feel impulsed to study it, just to read without any technical background. It's graspable. It's something that you can, you can enjoy no matter what your background is. It's attractive to sciences and to humanities. It's, uh, it has uh, rich and old history. It's a discipline in itself, the history of astronomy. It has given shape to the philosophical thinking of civilizations, uh, answering the most, well, at least addressing the most uh, fundamental questions of uh, what we are, where do we come from, where we are going. And uh, wherever there has been uh, culture, uh, there has been art, and there has been astronomy. And that's true for all places and for all ages. It is linked in the modern times to the drama of a space exploration, to going outside our planet. So astronomy is what we find when we go out of the boundaries of uh, our own planet, when we are in space. In the modern vocabulary and uh, in, the, even in the pop art vocabulary, there are many terms that are borrowed from astronomy and astrophysics, almost esoteric concepts that we use sometimes in colloquial terms in our everyday language. Uh, dark energy, black hole, Exosolar planets, perhaps our last uh, edition, the Big Bang, uh, star birth, quasars, are terms that we use often with a met metaphorical, uh, uh, you know, metaphorical content uh, without perhaps uh, knowing exactly what we are talking about, but they have a strict uh, scientific meaning which describes uh, well-known uh, objects or at least uh, uh, well-confined uh, uh, concepts in, in physics. For uh, those of you who are more technically oriented, is high tech at work. Uh, on the one hand, there is the state of the art, uh, the human made technology, the forefront uh, technology that pushes uh, our technical capabilities to the limit in the construction of telescopes, of instruments, of detectors. And uh, this interrogates the untouchable, it interrogates the, the universe. Astronomy has been, uh, has been defined as a science of what you see but you don't touch. And uh, this generates a tension between this, uh, this uh, human ingenuity taken to the limit in building instruments that can capture every single photon in which astronomers will be interested in, and this unfathomable, this uh, enormously, infinitely distant, almost, object that is the topic of a study. And finally, it uh, asks questions that uh, can be compelling from the angle in which you can, in which you, you, you look at it. The painter tries to paint it, the poet tries to say it, the philosopher tries to convey the meaning to your mind, and you can enlarge this list with uh, the, the questions that uh, your activity and your field of interest will trigger in connection with astronomy. Sometimes in a very compelling way, like uh, the context in which uh, this sentence here in, in italics was, uh, was uh, written down, which was uh, back 43 years ago, by John Cernan when well, orbiting the moon, a situation in which his questions come very much to the forefront as uh, limit human experience. So the question that I would like to finish with is, uh, what does it mean to you? And uh, I will leave it here.